Hey, what's up guys? It's the Doc Man. We're out here on Fonda Lake in Brighton and we're gonna show you how to do a winch cable repair or some people call it a lift cable repair. Come on down. So we got Nate in the water already with the floats. Typically, a winch cable is broken when we're replacing it. Most of the time, customers don't call us until it actually breaks. In this situation, we actually had some other repairs to do on the lift and the winch cable itself was getting fatigued and old, so the cradle's up and easily replaced. Typically, the cradle's gonna be down and you have to lift it up off the bottom and get your floats underneath it, but today, the cradle still is suspended, so Nate's gonna slide the floats under for step one to float the cradle and take pressure off of it as I lower the winch cable. Nate will tell me when to stop when he thinks uh, the spool has gone around enough to where he can disconnect it. So you notice the slack in the cable, but the cradle is staying up. If we didn't have those floats underneath there, that cradle would be going right down to the bottom and we're not gonna be able to do the repair we need to and, and get to the cradle effectively to get the new cable through it or get the old one out for that matter. Another thing, Nate brought up a very good point and I know he's, he's saying this from experience because he's done hundreds if not thousands of cable repairs. Be very careful of burrs, um, especially if you're sliding your hand on the cable, which is a huge no-no. Almost every time you're gonna end up catching, um, catching a burr that's sticking out and it's gonna puncture right into your hand. Most of the time too, with cables that have been in the water and lakes full of bacteria, you're gonna get an infection. Gloves might not be a bad idea for some. We're on our last wrap here. Okay, go ahead and stop. All right, I'm gonna stop here. Nate has this where he wants it to take it off. Once this set bolt's loose enough, the cable slides out pretty easy. There it goes. Now that the cable's out, it's gonna be pulled through the cradle. Just to give you an idea of how this cable is routed, just to kinda help you understand the process a little bit better. The cable starts in the winch box where you've seen us just take it apart. It goes through the cradle underneath this first corner pulley, and then the second corner pulley down there where Nate's standing, and then where Nate's hand is, is this same cable going up and securing to the frame. So really it's just a big U of cable that goes from the top weldment to the winch box. Pretty simple actually. All right, Nate's gonna go ahead and pull this through. I'm gonna be careful of burrs over here and help him guide it through. You're definitely gonna end up with this being um, trained memory-wise from being wrapped on a spool for years, and you're gonna have to kind of finesse it through or it'll end up getting stuck in the cradle. Go ahead. There it goes. And out the other side. Sometimes it gets stuck. So now that he pulled it out, straight out, now he's just bringing it around and up through the hole to get it totally out of the cradle. That's his last pull right there. So now it's totally out of the cradle. And um, Nate, do you remove that before you run the next one through? It doesn't matter, but how do you usually do it? Remove yeah, it now? If, or? if I'm on a time crunch, I just will do that last. Okay, because you, you know? do it in one move, take off, put yeah. the new one on. Okay, so now the new cable goes through. You're gonna usually get a cable that looks something like this. Um, for a lot of lifts, um, it's just a tag end on one side, so no connection at all, and then a loop on the other. Some have eye bolts. Um, there's a couple different type of setups to terminate the cable, but this is very typical. Um, usually a cable is gonna run anywhere from $100 to $200 from your manufacturer. Most of the time they can UPS ship it. Depending on the size of the hoist, the cable sizes change. This one's 3 8 inch thick by 27 feet, galvanized cable. Um, galvanized cables are usually what you use for a lift cable. The stainless cables have a little less tensile strength and the winch cable or the lift cable does not sit in the water year round or season round like all the leveling cables do. So you're okay with a galvanized cable as far as corrosion, as long as you keep it greased. Um, again, this is a 3 8 cable for a 6,500 pound hoist. If you're getting down to 4,000 pound lifts or 3,000 pound lifts, it's usually a 5 16 cable, but generally speaking, approximately 27 foot long for any, any type of lift um, that's a vertical lift. Next up, you take off 27 twist ties. Be careful with this cable too. They can have burrs. It shouldn't have burrs. The strands should all be together, but every once in a while there'll be one poking out and it can get you. We start on the far side. Nate's gonna take the tag end of the cable, the one that has no termination point on it, 
and he's gonna feed it through the cradle under the pulley all the way across to the other side. See, he goes through the hole, so it's gonna be routed properly. But again, instead of trying to go through that hole and make it wrap around the pulley, he gives himself enough slack to be able to get a straight shot and be able to just push at a 180 or straight through under the pulley and make life easier on himself. So on this side, I should be able to see this come right under. And I don't see it yet. There it is, good. All right, so get your slack coming through and you're gonna send it up through the guide hole here. Oh, come on. Okay. So we're pulling through all the slack. Nate's guiding it from his end. Okay. Now we put the winch cable back into the winch box. Nate brought up a really good point off camera for a second too. When you're pushing the cable through, the new cable from the start, it went underneath that pulley really easy for us today. I mean, you're literally hitting about a 3 8 pocket with a 3 8 cable, so it doesn't always go that smooth. Usually it wants to dead end into the pulley. What Nate was saying is if you're pushing and it's hitting the pulley and it's not making it all the way under, just start twisting your cable and pushing, twisting and pushing, and eventually it'll find its home and pop underneath that pulley. There's been times where I've struggled for four or five minutes to get it to go through, but if you stay persistent and keep spinning and twisting that cable, it'll find its home if you don't get it in the first shot. So now Nate's taking off the old cable that we pulled out to start. He's gonna slide that out, and then he's gonna terminate the new one and tighten it down. So the next step, and there's a couple different ways to do this, but Nate's done enough of these. He's figured out the, the uh, least fussy way to do it if you will, is to go ahead and let your cable drop now all the way down to the lake bottom so you don't have as many wraps that you're having to hold your hand to keep pressure on this cable as you're pulling it back up. So he's going to go ahead and pull the floats out that we were using to hold the cradle up. Down the cradle goes. You want to watch. You just don't smash your feet or anything as it goes down. Now there's not as much cable that's loose and slacked for it to go up into the winch box. So Nate's going to put the, the tag end of the winch cable into the drum. And uh, it's really important you watch how he puts it in because there is a right way and a wrong way to do that. You're also going to want to make sure you don't route your cable around any of the frame where it shouldn't go. It, it, it pays to just check real quick and look down and make sure your cable isn't wrapped around something it shouldn't be. Because once you terminate it into this winch box, you're going to kick yourself in the ass when you have to take it back out and slide it under a frame piece that it shouldn't have been under. Okay, Nate's having me lift up to change the position. You can see the, the hole. You can see the drum when it's spinning. You want to be able, when you put your cable in there. You want that cable to follow the drum. Go ahead and stop. You want the cable to follow the drum. If I went this way with it, it'll end up bending itself. You just put unneeded stress in the cable. So you also want to see how far you're through. You obviously don't want to be that far through. We start obstructing these structure bolts here. So you want to pull it out a little bit. So I'm going to have to go up back. Go back up real quick. Good. Tighten down the set bolt. Yeah, new set bolts, you can't do too tight. So go ahead and rear them down. Okay, once the cable's in and the set bolt's tightened, we're gonna go up with the cradle. This is important to do what Nate is here. He's actually stacking this cable accordingly back and forth so it doesn't just wad up on itself or on one side and then it'll roll off itself and the cradle will drop and it'll make problems. So, so you need to stack it properly. We'll get a shot of it as it's being stacked so you can see what that looks like. So he starts on one side of the drum, lets it wrap, <clears throat> and then works it across and just lets it stack congruently all the way across the spool. Once it gets to one side, if there is enough wraps for it to make it to one side, then he stacks it back across itself in another row. Okay, the cradle's starting to move up now. So we must have did something, right? Once the cradle gets up far enough to where you can see the pulleys, just make sure they're spinning properly and that the, the cable itself is laying on the pulleys properly. We're gonna bring it up until the cradle's just out of the water and just make sure that cable's routed properly, like I said previously, and that those pulleys are spinning accordingly. And then we're gonna lower it back down and we're gonna put this boat on. That'll be the ultimate test. I'm watching this pulley here and you can see through this viewing hole, it's sitting on the groove of the pulley like it should be and it's spinning. Looks like we're all good. Everything's sitting level, square. 
Now it's time to lower this cradle back down and float the boat over and put some actual weight on it and give it a lift. Let's see what happens. Cable stacked good. Boat sitting where it should on the bunks with good center of gravity. That's how you repair a cable. How are we looking, Nate? Good, looking really good. Boy, it's sitting level, moved up smoothly. Successful. All right, that's it. So now that the boat's up and being held, we naturally give it a little bit just to make sure it's gonna stay in place. And, and while we're waiting on that, we once again make sure that the cable is seated on the pulleys properly. And we make sure that the winch cable wrapped inside the winch box on the drum properly. Other than that, just make sure that you loaded the boat to where the center of gravity is where it should be on the cradle, and then it's sitting on the bunks properly, and you're good to go. So that's how to replace a winch cable or lift cable. Thanks for watching.